Cameras rolling in three, two, one. Come on, shout revival! Shake the nation! Come on, shout to the Lord if you believe that. Amen. Deep inside me is calling out to the deep in him. I mean the deep in me is calling out for mega power. For mega grace! Hi, my name is Tom Scarella. My wife Susie and I are evangelists out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and it's our privilege to be able to share the Word of God with you today. Uh, you're welcome to view our website and see some updated things that we have on there. We have sermons on there, various different things at www.scarella.com. That's spelled S-C-A-R-R-E-L-L-A.com. So today I want to do this. I want to take you through the Word of God. I want you to go to the book of 1 Kings 17, and I want to share some various different things with you. I really will bring, believe will be a great breakthrough to you in your life. And so let's pray first. Father, we bless you today in the name of Jesus. Lord, open our heart. Do a, do a new thing in us. And Lord, we ask you to provoke us to another level, we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, in 1 Kings 17, the Word of God says this, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew or rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here, and turn eastward, and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it shall be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. The ravens to feed you there. And then it says, and so, she, so he went and he did according to the word of the Lord. And for he went and he stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Now, here in this section of scriptures, we're going to read farther in just a moment, but we see this in the area of giving and in the area of prosperity and breakthrough in your, in your finances. We see in the first seven verses that here's the prophet Elijah. He makes his grand entrance, so to speak, onto the stage. He is introduced uh, as Elijah the Tishbite, and he begins to speak to Ahab and to the very prominent people. He delivers a word from the Lord, and he says, listen, you're about to enter a time of drought. You're about to enter a time where it will not rain for three years and according to my word. And so after he gets done with that, the, the word of the Lord comes to him because he's in a time of need in his life. And so what the Lord does is he does something very, very interesting. He takes a prophet who has a need, and he puts the prophet in a place of provision. So we see the first thing that the Lord says to him in verse 3. He says, the first word of the Lord is this. It says, get away from here and turn eastward. And so the Lord was repositioning Elijah. The Lord was repositioning Elijah, and he was bringing him to the place of prosperity. He was bringing him to a place. The Lord was directing him where to go for his breakthrough. And many times what people do is they just kind of hope and pray in their own scenario instead of finding out from heaven where they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to be doing. And so here he gets a word from heaven, get away from here, turn eastward, and hide by the brook Cherith, which belongs to Zidon in the Jordan. And it says this, and it says, it'll be that you'll drink from the brook. So obviously the one part of his provision was met because of the brook. The Lord knew that brook would not dry up for at least three years. So here he is in this place of, of, of need, or not, not at least three years, but at least some period of time. And so he knew for some period of time the brook would still run. And so the prophet would have a flow. He would have a flow of provision. And so, but he also had a need as well for, for food. And so what does the Lord do? He brings a prophet in contact with a raven. Now, if you know anything about ravens, a uh, very large black bird that uh, typically they're not known for sharing anything. So this is a supernatural thing that takes place. And ravens are so large. Let me just tell you an interesting story about a raven. Uh, we were ministering in uh, Canada, in Alberta, Canada. While we were ministering there, 
It was the dead of winter. It was very, very cold. It was about minus 40, 40 below zero. And uh, as it was in such a cold temperature, uh, the pastor and I were on our way to the service that night. And so as we're on our way to the service, we come up to the stoplight. And as we're, we were paused at the stoplight, uh, we're waiting and we see these large ravens that are there. And uh, as they're there, in, in, they're in Canada, what they do is, is it's very, very common for them to leave their vehicles run uh, in the wintertime. So it could, rather than to shut them off in hopes that they'll restart. So they literally just leave their vehicles on. Well, we happened to be by a supermarket, and so I saw uh, a lady come out of the supermarket. So here she comes out of the supermarket with her grocery bags, and she and her husband, they place them in the back of their pickup truck. They put the bags of the groceries in the back of the pickup truck, one, because it's so cold, even the frozen items won't thaw out. And so they set them in the back of the pickup truck, and they go back in to go get something else. As they go back in, I see something very, very interesting. I see this, these ravens that are perched up on top of the telephone poles jump off and one of them flies down with just like two swoops of his, arm, of his wings and he swoops down and as he swoops down, interesting enough, he swoops down and he picks up this bag of groceries with his own talons, picks it up in one swoop and flies off with this lady's groceries. And as crazy of a story as that is, I thought that was very, very interesting because here are these large birds, they're bringing provision to the man of God. Here they are bringing provision to the man of God. Interesting that as they do, the, the ravens were in need of a drink from the brook, but the prophet was in need of a meal. And so what he does is, the Holy Spirit does this all the time. He brings two parties together that are both in need. Very, very common. He brings two parties together that are both in need. He brings the raven together with the prophet that's in need, and he brings them together. They both supply each other's need. He does that today, in, in this day and age. He brings two people together. Many times, uh, uh, you'll see where uh, people come to ministries such as ours and others, that they'll come in contact with that, and as they have a need for a breakthrough, they need a word from the Lord as well as uh, uh, they have a need for a breakthrough in their finances, and the prophet may have a need for a, a, a blessing financially as well. Well, let's do this. Pause on that and think about that. But look down in verse 8. It says, And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. See, I've commanded a widow there to provide for you. A widow to provide for you. Notice it doesn't say a multi-billionaire. What does it say? A widow. What is that? That's a least likely source to bring provision. So he arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called her and says, please bring me a little water and a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called her and says, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Now, look in verse 10. And in verse 10, it says, very, very interesting, it says, and when he came to the gate of the city, a widow was there gathering sticks. So here she is, she's gathering sticks. And so the Lord gave him the exact right word. And then the prophet gives her a command. He gives her a command of faith. He says to her, go get me a drink of water. That really didn't cost her much. She, no problem. So she goes to get him a drink of water. As she's going, he says, oh, by the way, bring me something to eat. And as she's going to bring him back something to eat, uh, excuse me, he says, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. As, as she's going to get this water, this command comes from the prophet, and her response is, and she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin, a little oil in a jar. See, I'm gathering a couple of sticks, then I may go and prepare it for my son that we may eat it and die. Here she is, she's not very optimistic, obviously. She's preparing her final meal for her and her son, and they're going to die. You know, can you imagine Johnny comes home from school, Mom, what are we going to do tonight? Well, son, we're going to eat and die. That's what we're going to do, you know. And so here she is in this state, and the prophet gives her this word. And he says, go get me something to eat. And she says, I don't have. All I have is a handful of flour in a bin. And she says, I'm just going to prepare this, and we're going to die. So what does Elijah say? Elijah says to her, do not fear. But go do as you have said and make me a small cake from it first. First. Make me a small cake what? First. In other words, 
bring to me first. And one of the first principles of the kingdom is you must realize this, that especially in the area of a breakthrough in your finances, that uh, you always see this in the Old Testament, that always that your strongest seed is your first seed. That's why that's your tithe. Your tithe is your strongest seed. Your second strongest seed is your second seed. Your second seed, which is offerings and investments. And see, many, many people, what they do is they just pray and hope. Here, this woman, she's been doing that for some time, obviously, hasn't gotten any better. Here she is, she's no better. She needs a breakthrough. The prophet doesn't say, oh, let me just wave my hand over you, or let me just pray a general prayer over you, or, uh, well, we just pray, think, we'll put you on our prayer list. No, what does he say? You have to give. He says to her, don't fear, don't respond to fear, but instead, what? Bring me a small cake first. In other words, if you want to break through, you have to break through out of a poverty mentality by bringing to the man of God something first. Why? Because it's a, it's a principle of faith. It's a principle of faith. Your faith has got to activate the hand of God. And here, the prophet knew that, and he was trying to get that across to that woman. I mean, can you imagine today, no matter where you may be seeing this in the world right now, that, you know, any preacher that tells somebody, bring me some of your final meal first. I mean, almost any newspaper in the country would post that of a pastor, an evangelist, or a prophet, or an apostle, that he wanted somebody's last meal, you know, first. Why? It wasn't that he was being selfish and thinking of his own self. It wasn't that at all. He wasn't thinking of himself. He was actually thinking of her. The only way to break through, many of you watching right now, uh, the only way to break through into the next level in your finances is by breaking off and giving to God first. That's the only way. It's not, it's not an American thing. It's not a prosperity thing. It's, it's a God thing. It's a principle of the kingdom. No farmer would ever even contemplate giving his best seed giving up his best seed. No farmer would ever do that. What does a farmer know? Every farmer knows that if you want a breakthrough, you have to give your best seed to be sown back into the field. You don't give the leftover stuff. You give first into the field the best amount. Why? Because that's what you want to produce. Because the Bible says in the book of Genesis is that everything produces what? After its own kind. It produces after its own kind. So what you give will produce after itself. That's why Paul could say in 2 Corinthians 9, he who gives grudgingly will also receive grudgingly. And he who gives bountifully will also reap what? Bountifully. It's just a principle of the kingdom. That's why you can never plant a, a corn seed and get at an apple tree. Why? Because it produces after its own kind. It's a principle set up by God. And so uh, we've seen it so many different times in ministering to other people in different places. We've had people, both my wife and I, both Susie and I have had people come up to us crying and saying, Tom, we need a breakthrough. Susie, I need a breakthrough. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And many times people don't always want to know the truth. Let's just be honest. They want you to just say, well, let's just pray and then God will just do a miracle just because. But a poverty mentality is broken by the spirit of giving. A, a poverty spirit is broken by the spirit of giving. Every time you begin to challenge that spirit of poverty by a spirit of generosity and giving, you break its power over your life. You break its power. You break its hand. You break its control. Why, how do you do it? You do it by a spirit of giving. If you, if you need a breakthrough in any area, you need to move in the opposite spirit. If, if, you're, if you're bound with the spirit of anger, then you need to move in a spirit of love. If you're bound with the spirit of stinginess, then you need to move in a spirit of generosity. Whatever it is that, that may be plaguing you, you have to move in the opposite spirit. If you're plagued with a spirit of fear, then you have to move in a spirit of boldness. Moving in the opposite spirit will break that spirit of its power. It'll break that uh, uh, control off of your life. And so that's what the prophet is doing here. He's not doing this to be a jerk. <laughs> he's not doing this because he's selfish. He's doing it because he loves this woman and he loves God enough to tell the truth. And, and I can tell of, uh, story after story of, of, of various different people that we've prayed with 
that have, people have gotten tremendous breakthroughs. I'm thinking of a guy in California by the name of Richard. Richard, Richard was a homeless guy living under a bridge with nothing to his name. He literally lived in a cardboard box with nothing but a toothbrush. That's all he owned and the clothes on his back. And Richard ended up getting born again and filled with the Holy Spirit and came to this church uh, shortly before we got there to minister. And so the church kind of helped him out a little bit for about a year. And so Richard had a broken down old car. He rented one room. Uh, he had a little bit of clothes, but he still was functioning out of this poverty spirit. And so he heard me minister along these lines one night. And so Richard was... Uh, gracious enough to take me back to the uh, airport once the meetings concluded there. And so once he, we were driving to the airport, he began to weep in the car. And he said, Tom, he said, I need a breakthrough. What can I do to break this pattern in my life? And I said, Richard, I said, I, I wish that there was another way to tell you. All I can tell you is what God's word says. Jesus said in the red part of your Bible, Jesus said, give and it'll be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give back unto you. For with the same measure you measure it, it'll be measured back to you again. And so I said, so Richard, if you want to break this, I said, if I was you, I said, the way to catch the spirit of giving is to by becoming free of things. I said, man, if I was you, I'd just start giving like a wild man. I'm not just talking about tithing. Many people think that when they've tithed, they've given. No, no, no. If you tithe, you've given nothing. You're just returning to God what's already God's. Tithing is just giving God back what's already His. Tithing is not giving and giving is not tithing. Giving, when the Bible talks about giving, is above and beyond the tithe. And I told Richard that. I said, when, it's, when the Bible speaks about measuring it, it's talking about that second seed. That second seed. Not the first seed that's your tithe, your second seed, which is your offering. And as I share that with Richard, Richard caught the spirit of giving that early that morning as he took me to the Sacramento airport. And so here we are on our way to the Sacramento airport. I prayed with Richard and the power of God fell in the car right there and he's weeping and trembling under the presence of God. And so I flew out of town. I went to go minister somewhere else. Well, we found out later, Susie and I found out later about Richard, this is that Richard began to give like a wild man. He just began to not only give of his, of his money, he started, I mean, he's given watches and things that he had and clothes. and I mean, he was giving like a wild man. And when he broke free of things like that, something happened in the realm of the Spirit. And within less than 90 days, I believe it was even less than 60 days, Richard had such a breakthrough in his finances that he accidentally tripped upon a job opportunity where his first month, he, Richard made uh, $19,000. $19,000 U.S. dollars in one month. Where here this guy was working previously for $7 per hour, part-time. And here, bang, the power of God hit, even in the area of his finances. So God is no respecter of persons. Back in October of 2002, this preacher right here, we, uh, we were in desperate need. We were in desperate need. And I'll tell you what, I had a minister friend of mine by the name of Rodney Howard Brown who loved me enough to tell me the truth. And he said, Tom, the only way out of your situation is you've got to give your way out. That's the only way out. And so when he said that, there was tremendous liberty that was brought to me. And so I began to give like a wild man. Give, 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 give. And as I did, all of heaven broke in our ministry, and our ministry exploded 500% overnight. 500% our income went up. Just bang. Why? Because we caught the spirit of giving. And there's actually, let me just say this to you. There's actually four ways that God blesses you. There's four ways that God blesses you. And you, you should really, uh, if you're, you're listening to this, you should really write this down because you need to know these four ways that God blesses you. Because many people only see the one way that God blesses. But there's actually four ways that God will bless you uh, with prosperity. Number one is obviously money. That's everyone's favorite. <laughs> so number one is money. Number two is favor. Favor. Number three is things. And number four is deals. Money, favor, things, and deals. So we see that God blesses these four ways. He blesses his people. We see the same thing throughout the word of God. 
we see the children of Israel all through the book of Exodus and even in Psalms where it begins to speak about how they had a breakthrough in their finances. Remember when one day they were poverty-stricken slaves working for Pharaoh, and in a day that the wealth of the wicked was laid up for the righteous. Bang! All of a sudden they went and they stepped into their breakthrough, and as they stepped into their breakthrough, the Bible says they had favor. See, favor will take you where money cannot take you. And they had so much, they had so much favor, these people had so much favor in their lives, that Pharaoh and the people of Egypt went and just began to give them gold, began to give them silver, began to give them jewelry, began to give them things. Why? Because favor will do that. Favor will bring you where even money cannot bring you. And then obviously we see things and deals where God will bless you with things or God will bless you with deals. And I can tell you of, of in, our, in my wife's and my uh, own life where God has blessed us in all four of these areas so many different times, so many different ways. How does he do it? He does it exactly the same pattern that we see here in 1 Kings 17. We see in 1 Kings 17, what do we see? We see a substantial need, and then we see what? What does the prophet ask for? The prophet asks for a substantial seed. See, it's not just enough that she has a substantial need, oh, God feels so bad for her, and then God's got to do something. No, it's not a matter of God just feeling bad for you in your situation. If it, God does not do anything because you have a need. So you have to get that out of your head. Just because you have a need, that doesn't mean anything. The only thing that moves the hand of God is faith. Faith moves the hand of God. And that's exactly what we see this woman doing. The prophet is provoking her to step out in faith. Step out in faith. Begin to do what seems ridiculous. To get the miraculous, you have to do the ridiculous. And so here he begins to challenge her, and as he so does, something begins to happen. Amen? And so as something, what do we see here? He says, do not fear. Go do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. And bring it to me, and afterwards make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God. Now, here comes the prophetic word. He says, thus says the Lord God, the bin of flour shall not be used up, and nor the jar of oil run dry, until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away, and she did according to the word of Elijah, and she and her household ate for many days. And then the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. See, Elijah spoke that word over her. Why? Because of her faithfulness in giving. Guess what? God speaks a word over you and I, as you and I are faithful in giving. When we break through in this area, I could, I could tell you of another time. I remember in another service, we were sharing along these lines in one church. We had a week-long set of meetings there. And a lady and her husband were in desperate need in their business. They were in the process of, of going, getting ready to go into bankruptcy. They didn't know what to do. They were just at, completely at their end. And so what did they do? They went and they hurt us. In the first service, I'll never forget it, they were sitting in the back of the church. In the second service, they moved up a few rows. In the third service, they moved up even farther. By the fourth service, they were on the front row writing notes as we were sharing along this lines. The hunger inside of them to have that word of the Lord. They wanted that word from heaven. What if God brings into your life, I mean, just a ridiculous amount of money? I mean, just a ridiculous amount. You know, what does the Lord get? How much is that, that will you say, Lord, I'll give you this amount? Well, this couple, they begin to give like wild people over this 90-day period. As we spoke that prophetic word of them, we spoke that word of blessing. And this sign and a wonder follows our ministry wherever we go in the world. We've seen it work uh, in, in Uganda. We've seen it work in Finland. We've seen it work in uh, Puerto Rico. We've seen it work all over the U.S. and Canada, different parts of the world. As we speak that word, when that word is spoken, we always see this sign and a wonder take place in people's finances. And so what happened to this woman? Over, uh, in, it, you know, over seven years, they had been going down. And literally, in that period of time, they saw the hand of the Lord move in such a profound way that they made more in 90 days than they did in the seven years previously combined. They said to us, they said, Tom, we paid our business off. We paid our house off. We paid all of our debts off. We we're completely debt-free. We went 
and they always had a dream to drive a brand new Cadillac off the showroom floor. They bought a brand new Cadillac, a brand new RV that they went and they could travel the country praising God. And they sowed the largest seed at the end of the 90 days in their church. They paid the church off and bought a brand new air conditioning system for the church. Why? It all started with a substantial seed. And so where's your breakthrough going to come? You say, Brother Tom, I need a breakthrough. Well, you're just like this woman. You're in the same scenario as this woman. You know, many people, they just want someone to just wave their hand over them and, you know, try to make it easy for them. But you know what? The things of the kingdom, nothing is new under the sun. The, the things of the kingdom are very, very simple. And the principle of giving is very, very simple. As you catch the spirit of giving, I encourage you today, grab, I pray you get attacked with the spirit of giving today. You hear this today, I pray the spirit of giving just grabs your heart and you get free of things. My wife and I, we have a, a philosophy in our home that if it's in our home for a year and we've not used it, it's seed. And we sow it. And we look for places to sow it. We look, we sow watches, we sow clothes, we've sown cars, we've sown all kinds of different things. Why? Because we've caught the spirit of giving. And as a result, we've had a, just a tremendous breakthrough in, your li in, our, in our lives. And so I want to encourage you today, no matter where you may be, you may be uh, in, in another continent, another country, you may be in the U.S., you may be in Canada, I don't know, I don't care where you are. The Word of God knows no boundaries. It does not know male, female. It does not know old, young. It doesn't know color. It doesn't know creed. All it knows is to produce. And so I encourage you today, Breakthrough in the spirit of giving today. Catch the spirit of giving today. Begin to look to sow today in the kingdom. Begin to look to sow. Begin to look for your breakthrough. How are you going to find your breakthrough? It's not going to come by just somebody waving their hand over you. It's going to come by you catching the spirit of giving and being free of things. And so I want to pray for a breakthrough for you today. You're going to see a breakthrough. Many of you that are watching right now, you're going to see a tremendous breakthrough as a sign and a wonder of our ministry, no matter where we may go. And so you're going to see it even over the next 90 days. And so right now, just stretch your hands in expectancy. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for a miracle to hit your people. I pray for you to hit in, in, in miracles in every area of their finances, in money, in favor, in things, in deals. Lord, do a mighty work right now. Let it come quickly. Angels, go cause the money to come. Satan, take your hands off of God's people's money. In Jesus' name, amen.